As a young teenager, I was a huge techno geek, always being excited about new advances in technology, reading cyberpunk novels and thinking about jacking into cyberspace. I remember playing Deus Ex Human Revolution and thinking how cool it would be to have cyber prosthetics that would allow me to carry heavy stuff or a brain implant that I can use for, I don't know, interaction with a computer without touching a keyboard or having an instant night vision. Did I have any actual useful reasons for that? No, but it was so cool. But with the recent rise of AI tools, it turned from cool to scary. And look, I'm not saying that we should go back to candlelights and quills, and I understand that prosthetics and implants are a big deal when it comes to people with disabilities. What I'm saying is, as someone who used to be genuinely excited about new tech for the first time in my life, I'd rather wish the technology evolve at a bit slower pace. Sometimes I even feel that AI devalues something that once could only be achieved with the human mind. In this video, I want to examine the parts that I find troubling about this whole AI thing. And just as a side note, I will look from the perspective of writer and filmmaker, but it generally applies to any field. I don't want to be a fear monger, so I want to preface that yes, AI is just a tool, and it probably won't cause the end of humanity. That being said, as a creative person, I do have a few issues with mid journeys and chat GPTs of the world. Just as AI tools started to become half-decent at producing pictures and texts, a lot of people optimistically declare that now everybody can make their own movie. You don't need concept artists, costumes, set designers and animators anymore, because an AI can do that for you. Well, in reality, even making animation with the help of neural networks requires a decent level of skill and work, but who cares, right? Meet the new wave of democratization of tools. Just like in the late 90s with the creation of Photoshop, or in the mid-aughts when DSLR cameras finally became good at recording videos. Now you don't need heavy film equipment or aerial access that cost an arm and a leg to make a movie. And yeah, that's good, I'm all for lowering the barrier of entry. But here we run into my first problem, and it has to do more with the human perception than with the tools themselves. So, yeah. Now you can be a one-man band filmmaker. You can write a script, shoot some reference footage on your phone, and then neural networks will work their magic. No, 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 some people will argue. Writing your own scripts, are you crazy? It isn't 1950s anymore, AI can write the script for you too. And here I'm tempted to ask, so what? If AI can write a script, draw and animate everything, create voice lines, where do you as the author come in? To quote Innuendo Studio's wonderful essay on the beginner's guide, If someone handed you a page of Hamlet written out of pure chance by a chimp at a typewriter, would you try to interpret it the same way you would the same page as written by Shakespeare? If you knew it was an animal bashing randomly at keys, would you wonder what it means other than to ponder its sheer statistical improbability? See, we try to make meaning out of something when we know there was meaning put into it. The nature of art is still innately human. It is our way of exploring and communicating ideas and feelings using the tools of the given medium. Objection! A potential AI advocate can counteract this argument by saying that they, as the author, come up with an idea. And well, they still edited and tinkered with the thing, so it's not like they provided nothing. To which I might reply that although it is technically correct, the act of writing or any creation for that matter, is different from editing. You may have come up with an idea, but you haven't put it into writing. You simply ask to retell it based on a vague description of that idea. I think Nerdwriter summarized it greatly in his essay saying that editing works through the language of others, their words, their sentences, their narratives and arguments. Editing, too, begins with the language of someone else. In the case of chat GPT, some thing else. So, yeah. Technically, you can produce a decent piece with the use of AI. But considering your limited involvement, does it have any meaning? I don't have a definite answer to this question, and there are many nuances to this, but this is a question worth discussing. I gravitate more towards no, with some exceptions. 
Another thing about art is that a lot of it is incredibly collaborative. Yeah, there are solo developers and composers and writers, but there is still some type of collaboration involved. Let's put it this way. Wes Anderson, David Fincher or Martin Scorsese are great at directing but they aren't great at designing costumes, lighting or cinematography. And every artist that they collaborate with not only brings their expertise, but infuses their own meaning and life experience in the final work. What's more, they can show your vision from their perspective, which might lead to some unexpected yet creatively rewarding changes. And again, technically you can replace their output. A monkey with a typewriter can accidentally type Hamlet, but it cannot create Hamlet. You can't replace human touch. Unless, of course, you want to end up in... This part of the discussion has to do a lot with the word that they have a very troubling relationship with. Content. Because recently everything became content. A three-hour movie, a video game, and a short clip on social media exist in the same space inside this neat world, but it slowly changed the way we actually view art now. I think a lot of discussions surrounding AI generation wouldn't even exist without this word. No one in their right mind would talk about outsourcing making art to the machine. Because, I mean, it's art. It's what humans make. Content, on the other hand... In 2019, Meriwether Media published on Twitter a short webcomic with a simple, yet horrifying preface. I wrote a comic about the fate of humanity. Brit Monkey in his video gave it a very accurate name. These four panels may be the most bone-crushingly chilling piece of horror ever dubbed comic, save for Junjito's monstrosities, but that's a topic for another time. In the comic, a protagonist travels in time, thousand years into the future, to be precise. And instead of flying cars or an intergalactic delegation gathered to greet her, she is met by a robot that gives her a pill and the key to the room. The robot explains that in this room she can experience every pleasure capable of being transmitted into the brain simultaneously, while being kept safe and artificially alive until the sun burns out. In the world of Meriwether's comic, this is what humanity decided. No flying cars, space exploration or search for meaning. No need to risk precious human lives, explains the robot. The time traveler decides to try it. Just for a bit, she says. And in the final panel we see her sitting in the chair inside a small room, and then we see dozens, hundreds of other rooms just like it. How far do they span? How many rooms are there exactly? Did everyone decide to do the same? My reservation is that with the advance of AI, not only many artists will be out of a job, but that the art itself will become generative. I fear for the day when the main page of Netflix would be not a wall of posters, but a simple text bar. What do you feel like watching? It asks. So you type. A couple of seconds and voila, your own personal TV show made just for you, based on everything that you like and designed to trigger just the right spots for you to continue watching, without upsetting you too much. Well, you know how it goes, it's not like it hasn't been done before. Earlier this year, Skyler Hartle and Brian Hebersberger, through GPT-3 model, created an eternal remake of Seinfeld that generates itself on the fly. And as a piece of experiment or some kind of surreal art project, it sounds really cool. But the longer I think about it, the more horrifying and eerily prophetic the title starts to sound. I'm not trying to say that streaming services are the problem, although they kind of are, and they pay the artists like crap, but the competition exists only for our attention, not our minds or souls. That may sound like I'm exaggerating, but this is where I draw the line between art and content. Content is something we use to kill time, something to put in the background while we eat. Art isn't that. Art demands full attention and introspection. But to produce art, you need human experience, you need to risk, and at the end of the day, the risk may not even pay off. And with the attention spans getting shorter, and competition for eyeballs more severe, it's just easier, especially for corporations, to ask AI to generate an unending stream of content tailor-made for a specific user, until we all get into our own pleasure cubes.
This is actually the reason why I decided to make this video. Recently I've stumbled upon a lot of comments saying how great it is that now you don't even need to learn how to write or paint because AI yeah, can do that for you. I think this article in Euronews takes the cake. The title reads How AI can save your time. Five skills you no longer need to learn. And the first two skills listed are writing and art design. In a beautifully morbid twist of irony that probably escaped your news editor's grasp, later in the article they cite Bernard Marr, an author and futurist who says, hopefully in the long run it can be a good thing, because if you look at a lot of jobs we waste so much of our amazing human potential doing stuff that is not really adding a huge amount of value. Not really adding a huge amount of value. Writing and art design. And look. I'm not trying to bash your news here, but it does illustrate my point. The way people simply have decided that learning a skill isn't relevant anymore because a computer can do it more efficiently. Funnily enough, that reminded me of... In Douglas Adams's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a race of pan-dimensional hyper-intelligent species of beings, or simply put, white mice, that's Douglas Adams after all, created a supercomputer deep thought to figure out the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. The machine took seven and a half million years to process and calculate and then deep thought announced that the answer to essentially the most important question in the universe is... 42. As I told you, it's Douglas Adams, what else can you expect? The creators of Deep Thought dismissed the answer and in return the computer chided them for not understanding the question in the first place. Why am I talking about this now, you ask? Because Adams' story of Deep Thought serves as a very accurate metaphor for the current wave of AI tools. You can ask a computer for the answer to the ultimate question, but unless you walk the path yourself, I doubt you will ever understand it. 42 might as well be the answer to the ultimate question, for all I know. But it is not enough to just know the answer. The journey as is important as the destination. You don't have those ideas before you start writing. You know, they kind of fall into place as you're writing. At the end of it, you find out what your ideas were. It's, um, it's not your regular consciousness. And writing itself is quite a mystical act. You know, where does this stuff come from? What I'm trying to say is that eliminating the need for learning and the process of creation hurts not only individual creators or industries, but us as a species. I know that I sound like a crazy person standing outside with the sign the end is near, but I absolutely feel this way. Writing, or for that matter any sort of creative work, isn't only about the end product. More often it isn't about the end product at all. I've been at this writing game for more than 10 years at this point and I feel like I just barely scratched the surface. But in this process of trying and failing, I learned a lot. I learned the craft, but what's more important, I learned about myself. I had to wrestle with my inner complexes and problems, with the need to always write perfectly and putting so much unnecessary pressure on myself that the process turns into a horrifying tedium instead of something exciting. Here's a quick personal anecdote. Earlier this year, I finished the first draft of a feature screenplay that I started back in 2020. And for most at that time, I didn't write a single word. Sure, something like ChatGPT might have allowed me to finish it much quicker, but in this process of getting over my own complexes, I gained more than just a finished piece. I changed, hopefully for the better. And I don't think any AI would have helped me with that. Eliminating the need for learning a skill is dangerous because learning anything is not just about the subject itself, but about the person learning it. I cannot create images with the same level of precision or detail as the Mid Journey or Dali. The extent of my ability is stick figures that kinda look like humans. But I like to think if one day I decided to learn how to draw, then I can do that and in this process gain more than just an ability to produce images. While making this essay, I came across a lot of comments from aspiring and professional artists, musicians and creators that are feeling discouraged with this technology and thinking about giving up altogether. And look. I don't know what's going to happen in the future and I completely understand why many creators feel this way. And if you're an aspiring writer, artist or musician who's thinking 
whether they should try at all, or even if you're a working professional, I have something to say to you. Keep creating, keep learning. I know that every headline about AI makes you want to just give up, but don't. I certainly don't plan to, because I know that deep down that spark that led you to your art is bigger than corporate greed or any AI. Create, learn, fail miserably and win spectacularly. And to everyone else, support human artists. If you can't support someone's work financially, that's okay. Share pieces you've enjoyed with the world and engage with the art that moved you. If you're in a position to hire a human being, do that. Because I'm sure that the need for real human creativity and its effect on the world cannot be measured and cannot be confined to a simple button. Synthesize me some art. See you.